two two. Mike check testing one two. Mike check texting one two. Mike check testing one two. Mike check testing one two. Hey y'all, listen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Listen. Welcome to Breakfast with the Brookses. We getting it in just a little bit different. Last week we kept recording. It was so good. We just said, you know what? While this stuff is fresh on our mind, let's get it in. Welcome to Breakfast with the Brookses, everybody. My name is Glenn P. Brooks Jr. We are listening to Aloe Black, our dude. He's talking about being the man, the man, the woman in your house. Wake up, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Breakfast with the Brookses. I'm excited, y'all. We are really having a good time, babe. Today, we're going to continue the conversation talking about reclaiming your time. Yes, yes. This is going to be part four. Last week, um, we said we were going to end the series, but I ended it with, I wanted one last piece, wanted to talk to you guys about. So today, we're picking up reclaiming your time, part four. Yep. And we're talking about three ways to prioritize. Yeah, yeah. And this is going to be really good, guys. So real quick, at the top of the show today, I want you guys to do me a favor. Now, we because we kept recording, uh, we obviously are not here visually live, but we, we are. are in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely want to engage the process. We appreciate you guys for showing up. For those of you guys who don't know us, maybe this is your first time to the show, um, we're excited to have you. First of all, welcome. We want to ask you to please subscribe, yes. ring the bell so that you can get notifications yes. uh, when we go live. We're here every Saturday morning live at 8 a.m. Yes. Whether... We are physically here or in the chat. We <laughs> always live, even when we cruise. We, right. we, 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 we straight live. So my name is Glenn P. Brooks, Jr. Uh, I'm an author. I'm a speaker. I'm a coach. This lovely, light-skinned young lady is... Cherie Brooks, Jr., author, speaker, relationship, and life balance coach. Now, I know some people are asking, how was she a junior? Well, that <laughs> is a, I'll, I'll tell the story. Basically, when we got married, I took his name. So I took his whole name. He's a junior. He's Glenn P. Brooks Jr. So I'm Cherie Brooks Jr. So there you go. So listen, <laughs> for all of you guys who are just uh, jumping in the room, do me a huge favor, guys. Tag somebody. Share this out. Uh, figure out a way to, to post this link somewhere else because we're going to help you guys sort of navigate some things that we have been perfecting for the last 20 years, mm -hmm. right? And I know a lot of people from the outside looking in, babe, they often think, well, you know, I don't know it well let me say this we get word that some of y'all believe that we ain't got no problems it's that's not that true that's 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 what we hear you know it's not true. because we're, we're actually we're in a human. space we're actually in a space where we're doing the teaching but please understand this the teaching that we're doing we're doing it from the places that we've lived through right and so yeah we may be in a different space we may not go through the way everyone else is going through, but we're going through nonetheless. Right. And uh, and what we do want to do is encourage you that it's possible to get through. So yeah. you ain't got to let your situation. You're looking at a person who, when I got married, I came to our relationship with trash bags of clothes, not folded, <laughs> not laundered, not big black anything. Trash big bags. black hefty mm -hmm. joints like the yard trash bags. He had problems. I had major problems. My closet didn't have hangers. I was forever ironing something, uh, you know, before I had, like, my life was a mess. And so, and then I met this lovely turtle and uh, <laughs> she changed, she changed my whole life. So today we're going to go back, uh, recap just a tad bit, babe, if you could bring everybody up to speed. This is part four. I think it's going to be the last installment in the series. But when we left off last week, we were talking about, um, uh, really kind of taking things to the next level with the whole time blocking piece, the whole putting things on the chart. Uh, we talked about, you know, how, how, so being able to delegate. how to delegate and all those different things. But now what we really want to kind of drill down on is sort of prioritizing. So your systems that you right. put in place, right. how so, do you prioritize that to, 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 so that you get, become the most effective? Right. So the last three weeks, we really were talking about how to get things in order more so inside in your home. So dealing with tasks, chores, things, responsibilities around the house, how to get the rest of your family on board to be able to share that load. And so today we're going to talk about prioritizing where we're really looking more so at how to prioritize prioritize so that the things on the outside don't come and affect the inside. Mm. And what I mean by that is that you're being able to prioritize so that the things that, and I'm going to just jump into this. Number one, well, it, we're, there, are three ways, there are three ways to and, prioritize. And, and I want you guys, if you're ready, do me a right. favor. 
I want you to put ready in the chat before you jump in. And the reason why, babe, is because I want to set this up from one specific place okay. real quick. Oftentimes, when it comes to reclaiming your time, people are under the notion that time is something that's manageable. Right. And because you don't own time, right. you can't manage it. Right. We all get the same 24 we hours a day. We all get the same 24 hours a day. The difference, however, when you look at a person's life and you say, wow, how are they able to do so much? I know I've looked at, you know, you look at a Steve Harvey or you look at, you know, people who have, you, it's visible. They got 15 jobs a Beyonce or Jay-Z, these different people who have a ton of things going on and it's very visible. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? How do they execute those kinds of things? And there is a way that they live. Most successful people live this way and it's a way where they're able to prioritize their day and thus they reclaim their time and they're able to sort of put a boundary or boxes around it to kind of make... Uh, cause it to do what they want to do. Right. So if you're ready uh, for number one, put a number one in the chat. We're talking about three ways to prioritize if you're going to re reclaim your time. Right. And I, I do want to start to say, I, I have had the habit of prioritizing, you know, for a very long time, but I, I, my perspective shifted just a tad bit. I was watching um, Sister Circle on Friday. It's a show that comes on. It's a daytime show that comes on and Priscilla Shire was on. And she was talking about how she's able to manage all of the things that she has going on in her life. And the way that she put it, I had never put it this way before. And so that's where these kind of come from. So number one is to identify what's most important yep. to you. And the way that she talked about it on the show was she basically was saying that, you know, she, her and her husband at the beginning of the year, every year, they sit down and go through what their year is going to look like. And they literally map out their year but what they're putting on their mat on their calendar first and foremost are the things that are important to them yeah and for them their number one value is family so all family birthdays all family events if the kids got games going on because they're in extracurricular activities they put that on the calendar first and so those things are what is most valuable to her those are the things that are most important and she actually said and I found this really amazing she accepts jobs based on her her schedule. Now, real so, quick, let me just, for those that don't know who, who Priscilla, Priscilla Shiver is from a can of paint, oh, I'm sorry. most people are familiar with Dr. Tony Evans. That's right. his daughter. She is a prolific, best selling author. She's an incredible communicator, speaker. She's also a film producer. She starred in War Room, I think it was. Mm -hmm. she has a she, new she's film a new film come coming out. out. And uh, she's being asked to come to. To, to conference, particularly women, she women's women conferences. Conference. She's, a, she's a speaker. Not only her own, but then a speaker mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff. So when Cherie talks about that she accepts jobs, uh, for a person like that who is in charge of their own schedule, mm -hmm. um, what she's saying is, is that I look at my calendar. There are 365 days on it. Let's say 100 of those days are taken up with family activities. Mm -hmm. Birthdays, anniversaries, um, the kids' soccer the games, the kids' recitals, games, whatever. recitals, whatever the case may be, things that you already know about. Obviously, you have to get a heads up on the schedules, and, and, and maybe it's done quarterly or whatever the case may be. But she's going to mark off the calendar that day isn't available, that day isn't available, that day isn't available. For the, and then after she does that, her and her husband, what they do is they say, okay, now we can show up and we can add value to other people. But I want to go back to that number one thing is identify what what's most important. important. That is what we call your why. Right. Let me say this, guys, so this is super clear. If your why is not huge, the what won't matter. Right. Let me tell you what I mean when I say that. If the why is not big enough, the what you have to do to get to the why doesn't make a difference at this particular point. Right. So when we talk about what's most important to you, it's what do you value? Yes. What is, what is your core value? That's going to identify what's most important to you. So for me, that's family. And so... For me, that's the most important thing to me. So when I think about anything, anything that I'm doing, family always comes to mind first. How is this going to impact my family? And so when we're talking about being able to prioritize in regards to reclaiming your time, similar to how Priscilla does it, you want to look at, okay, what are these 
family events, family things, family days that are important. Whether it's mapping out, we're going to take family vacation during this time. And that's something <coughs> that we do. We do our calendar and we'll look and say, okay, we're going to do family yep. vacation this time. Yep. Or we're going on vacation. It may be just the two of us or it may be with the whole family. But we map out these times during the year that we know this is our time. And we're not going to allow anything to impede upon that time. Reclaiming so, our time. Right. Reclaiming our Re time. Reclaiming our time. Reclaiming our time. <laughs> and so that's the first thing in prioritizing. You have to identify what's most important to you. So that's whatever you value. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that are going to be the things that will be at the top of your priority. Those are percent. the things that are going to be the things that you're going to you're going to say yes to those things always. Right. And when you say you're going to say yes to those things always, Sheree, I think that people need to understand that. When I identify what it is that I value, I'm not talking about what it is that I like right. or what it is that I need to do. Right, Let's just be dead real. Some of you guys, you have jobs that you need to go to, mm -hmm. but they're not of value to you other right. than a paycheck. Right. You are doing a job, maybe it's a career that you're in. I know a young lady who's a doctor um, in a particular field. Uh, it's a job, mm -hmm. but it's not what she values. Right. And when you when I say that, meaning she values her family. So if something goes down with the family, I promise you, the job is going to get slighted right. quicker than the family will. Right. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So whereas for me, I'm just being dead real. My number one value is not family. Mm -hmm. It's Cherie's. My number one value is teamwork. Mm -hmm. My value is that wherever I show up, I'm adding value to the team. Right. The team in some cases could be my family, but also the team could be my coaching, our coaching programs. Mm -hmm. um, the people that I get up, get to show up and serve. Mm -hmm. The team could be uh, the people who are in our community, Right. So I often have to get a hold of what why is more prevalent at this particular point, mine or hers. And that's why I'm telling y'all that it's not the mutual interests of people that sustain relationships. It's the mutual values. I do have family as a value. It's just not number one. Right. And so my propensity, listen to me carefully, is to give way to something else that's pressing over my family. So what I have to do, we're going to talk about that today. Mm -hmm. I have to factor for that. So if I'm honest with myself and I'm saying that's a value of mine or not, how do I work with that in mind? And so it's important for you to establish that. Why? Why are you smile? Right. Because I mean, we're going to get into that, but I know some people are probably saying, well, y'all values aren't the same. You always talk about, you know, it's the mutual values, but you guys don't share mutual value. You know, we both value the same thing. It's just in a different order. But we're going to talk about how you're able to balance that between the two of you if it's a husband and a wife and you don't share. Because you're, you're probably thinking, you know, well, how y'all going to schedule your year if he values this and she values this? That's, oh, that's there's a, good, a conflict. That's a good, that's good. It is initially, but there's a way that you can work that so that you both can come together and both get what it is that you need right. accomplished. Right. And so, uh, and, and able and, to still pro reclaim your time because you're going to. You're going to work together. Number two is going to help them. Yeah. Number two is going to help y'all understand this a little bit. I can see my turtle-minded thinking people. They're like, that uh, don't they, make sense. There are four different temperaments <laughs> that people have. We call them lions, flamingos, chameleons, and turtle. The turtle is a real analytical person mm -hmm. who is just trying to figure out, like, how is this going to work? That's mm -hmm. Cherie's temperament. Uh, mine is more lion and flamingo. And the truth of the matter is, is that... I have to constantly give way to the other temperaments in order to show up and be the best version of myself as possible. And so if you're ready for number two, put a number two in the chat. If you're ready for number two, put a number two in the chat. Sharif, most people don't practice being self-aware. Right. Most people do not practice being super real and honest with themselves. And so they're constantly running into challenges. So because I can own that oftentimes family is not my number one priority. Right. Right. It is my number two. Right, right. But you're aware of that. But and, I'm very aware so, of that. So we don't fight when it comes to that because you realize that. And I mean, and security is my number one of my 
values top well. values. And so that lines up with your number one value. Exactly. <laughs> so. it, 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 exactly. Teamwork, right? right? Like mm -hmm. I got to be playing my part. Right. I have to build our business. I have to be doing what needs to be done to secure mm -hmm. what needs to be secured so that my wife uh, feels comfortable in her space and do what needs to be done. So I need y'all to be really, really clear. I think we've made that point. Number two, number, 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 number two. two. Is that you have to be able to set boundaries. Yes. And when we say boundaries, we're basically saying you're being able to say no to those things on the outside. Being able to say what? Say, say what? Say, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Ability to say, say what? what? No. Being able no. to say. No. 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 Being able to say what? No. 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 Being able to say no to those things that take you away from the things that you value yep. so that you can say yes yep. to the things you do value. So remember, you're saying no to the things that will take you away from most important or the things that you value so that you can say yes to the things that you do value. So That's what good. that looks like is That's so really good, if it's a Saturday and one of my friends calls and is like, hey, I need you to come and help me do do da 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 with them. I'm going I may say no because this is my first free Saturday and I've I want to spend time with my family. I want to spend time with my daughter. And so for me, because family is my priority, I'm going to say no to going to help my friend right now so that I can say yes to what I value. Correct. And I'm not going to feel any type of way Correct. about saying no. I'm going to be nice. I'm just letting them, hey, I can't do that. Correct. Because I'm going to do something that lines up with what I value. I'm going to invest that time in that versus doing something on the outside. I got one. Um, we recently, uh, probably about a month ago, I guess, well, maybe a little bit more than that, we uh, were uh, booked to uh, do a speaking engagement uh, in November. Mm -hmm. And um, we had already had our calendar set when this opportunity came about. Mm -hmm. And it was an opportunity for us to go and add a, a dope, amazing amount of value uh, to, uh, to a group. And, um, and what I had to do is look at my calendar before I said yes, mm -hmm. right? And on my calendar, there are a couple of things. One of which, that particular week, uh, involved my son-in-law's birthday, mm -hmm. right? And this particular event was uh, gonna go like, it's like it's a Monday, Monday through Friday, Saturday. Saturday. And um, I looked at that and Cherie was like, we can't do it because we have this birthday celebration to go to for our son-in-law. We want to be there because over the last three or four years, I've been traveling on his birthday and I remember him saying something right. about it. It's like, man, why, it, no it, it seemed like, cause we, so that you guys really understand, we celebrate everyone's birthdays and our family together if we possibly can. Right. And so it's kind of a thing. And, and so I'm just never there on his and I don't like that. And so, what I did was, and y'all have to understand, teamwork is my number one value in most cases, uh, but right underneath of that is family. So how do I resolve conflict when they both come into play? Teamwork is me showing up and adding value to others, right? Mm -hmm. Family is me showing up and, and, value, and, and adding value to my family. So Cherie said, we can't do that. And then because teamwork is my priority, I said, wait a minute, I'm not sure that's the case. What would it look like if we said yes to this event, but we said, no, we can't come the whole week? Mm -hmm. They were asking us, could we come the whole week? Initially, right. Initially. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the calendar. The answer to that question is no. Right. Because I want to align myself with my spouse's number one value. I want to be there for my family. I want to love on my family. I want to be there for my son. So the truth of the matter is, is that, but because of the teamwork priority or value, my mind begins to go through how can we do both out. and mm -hmm. not either or and do it successfully without anybody feeling no type of way. Mm -hmm. So we really literally went back and we said, the answer is yes, but there's a caveat. We can't come the whole week. We can only come Wednesday through Saturday, Saturday or whatever it was, mm -hmm. because we were going to do a celebration at the beginning of that week. Mm -hmm. They were like, no problem. We good. Mm -hmm. So we were able to book the engagement, say yes mm -hmm. to that. But then we were able to say yes to the our family. family. Yes. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. So when you are able to say no, and I love that perspective, babe, because saying no to one thing 
is saying yes to something opens else. Opens me up and gives me room to say yes to something else. Right. And I think a lot of people, they that's think good. when I'm saying no, I'm just saying no. Yeah. And that's not what that means. You're saying no. If you don't have a, a reason for saying no. Yeah. Um, it kind of does come with a sting. <laughs> But if I'm saying no so that I can say yes to something else, number one, it makes it easier for me to say no. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people just are not in the habit of saying no. Nope. You, you know, you got people calling you, you know, your mother needs this, your cousin needs this, so-and-so needs this, your friend needs this. Everybody needs something. They're constantly pulling on you. You're like, okay, I can, well, let me, let me do this first yeah. and then I'll come and do that. And then hold up. I, I, I can do this too. Yeah. No, yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> no, you tell me. Say it with me, right? Say, Everybody, no, seriously, say, I'm say, talking to you guys. You guys, say it with us. Say it with us. No, say it again. No, say it again. No, one more time. There you go. All right. So just practice saying no. Practice but saying no. But you're saying no to say yes to something that you value. That's the whole key to that. If you're ready for number three, put that in the chat. Today <laughs> is going to be short, sweet, to the point. We're going to get right to this content. Guys, I'm going to tell you all something right now. Many of you guys are not able to do these things because number three is not in place in your life. Mm -hmm. And Sheree, one of the things that I realized that um, we are able to help grow a group of people uh, in these principles because of number three. Yes. And I think that unfortunately, guys, most people, when number three is not evident in your life, um, you have great ideas, but you can't pull them off. Right. You have great thoughts. Creativity is not a problem, but it's actually getting that out of your mind into your real space outside of you so it can benefit you. I think unfortunately, this is the one area, babe, where everybody wants it but few is willing to work for it. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants this because they love the benefits that come with this. But often the work that it takes to do number three is a work that's arduous. Mm -hmm. It's a work that's sometimes painful. It's a work that, that rails against your ego. Yes. yes. It's, a, it's a work that causes you to have to step in the place of vulnerability. Yes. It's a work that really is worth doing it's just not the easiest lift in the world because quite frankly, as human beings, we're really not built to do this because we, we, let me say it this way, we are built to do this, but most of us inherently are selfish. And so right. as a result of that, doing number three becomes difficult because it doesn't involve just me. It, right. it involves others. <laughs> right. So I know everybody is trying, like, okay, can you give me number three already? Right. Like, Jesus. <laughs> so number three, I want y'all to put this in the chat. Number three is what, baby? Accountability. Number three is what? Accountability. You have to have accountability. And what accountability is not, and it's funny, I was laughing when you were saying that, the thought that came across my mind is me just saying, you're not the boss of me. Oh, yeah. And so a lot of times people think being accountable means that you're giving someone else power to dictate what you do or yeah. what you don't do. That's not what accountability is. Accountability is basically you being able to have someone that knows where you're trying to go and they're there to help you course correct when you get off course. Say that word again. They're there course. to course correct you when you get off course. So for us, you know, we were talking earlier about how Glenn's val number one value is teamwork. My number one value is family. And so there are times when that does attend um, appear to conflict or to clash against each other. But because we're accountable to each other, mm -hmm. we're able to talk about it. And so with the situation he talked about, you know, he came to me, told me, hey, got this call. These people want us to do this, this event. It's these days. And I was like, well, we can't do that because Gary's birthday is on Monday. That's me holding him accountable. Because mm. we've talked, and even though family is not his number one priority, he wants to make that more of a priority in his life. He wants to, that's, that's one of his values, but he wants to make that more of his priority. And he's been doing a much better job the last couple of years. And so because that's something, an area that I know that he wants to work on, that he's trying to, you know, be consistent in, I'm able to basically check him and say, no, we can't do that. And then he's able then to come up with, well, what if we do it this way? And I'm like, okay, that works because we're able to achieve both. Cause I'm not going to, I'm, I mean, if it's, if it's a, all, all one. If we gotta go the whole week, I'm not going. Right. 
because that's my number one value. Right. So, but because we were able to talk about it, we were able to come to a compromise and say, okay, this will work. And they luckily they were willing to accept that. And we were able to do that. Yeah. So accountability helps me to course correct him when he gets so focused on mission or on teamwork, on doing the, the getting to his goal, whatever that is. And when he gets off course and he's over, over, not that's, overseeing or, or ignoring. Yeah. Um, I thought you were going to say overstepping my over, bounds, overstepping his bounds or, or just not focusing on my value. Yeah. I'm able to help bring him back on course exactly. and say, Hey, this is something we said we were going to do. Right. If you look up the word accountability, here's what accountability will not say in the dictionary. The accountability is not going to say, uh, this is something that I say to you, come and check me. That's not what accountability is. Mm -hmm. What accountability is, is that I put myself in a position where I'm able to be self-aware and tell you where I need help. Right, right. There's a difference. Baby, a lot of people use that word accountability loosely and they'll say things like, and I get it, well, hold me accountable. Hold me accountable. What that does, that word, you hold me, absolves you of being accountable. Of being accountable. <laughs> Let me tell you what that looks like. It looks like frustration. Mm -hmm. It can look like control. Mm -hmm. It can result in bitterness toward the person that you gave permission to, quote, hold you accountable. Right. And the problem is, is that it often doesn't work because the person that's been deputized as your accountability partner... <laughs> Get they get frustrated right. because they ain't messing with you because you're never anywhere to be found. You're not going to answer the phone when you don't want to answer the phone. You're not going to be in your community group when you're not going to want to be there. You're not showing up when you decide to get ghost on somebody. Right. And because of that, it will cause your accountability system to falter because the accountability system is based upon what someone else is having to do. It's not based upon what you are willing to position yourself that gives them that kind of permission. Right. I hope so, that makes sense. Right. And so how this looks in the confines of reclaiming your time. So we're saying that, you know, you need to identify what's most important to you. What's your why? What, what do you value? And then being able to set boundaries, being able to say no, where accountability comes in is then now you have somebody that you, you tell them, this is what I value. Yep. These are the things that are priority to me. And I am going to, I'm committing that I'm going to make those, that's where most of my time is going to be spent. When I have free time, this is what I'm going to focus on. Right. I'm not going to allow other things to take me outside of this. And especially if you're married, you let your spouse know that. Yeah. That this is where I am. This is what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Your spouse now or friend, whoever, now is able to hold you accountable and say, so, you know, when you, so it's a Saturday and I'm running around the house getting ready to go and do something. And we've already said maybe we were going to spend time together. And I'm like, and I'm running around getting ready to leave out the house. He's able to say, hold um, excuse me, where, mm -hmm. where are you going? Well, so-and-so called me and I need to go do this. Yeah, and, he's yeah. Say, well, and you I, just drew caution to the wind. It's like, well, hold on. Hold on. Didn't you say that we were going to spend family time today? Or? That's now me holding her accountable because she has stepped out of the boundary right. that she created that for herself. Right. Does or that make sense, makes, guys? Right, or even if he overhears me on the phone and I'm saying, you know, or I... It happens this happens to, to me all yeah, the time. Yeah, more so happens to him. I'll hear him on the phone and I'm hearing him... Commit the yeah, song. Yeah, I can, and I'll be like, "Excuse me, hey, can you put them on hold for a second? I'm like, "What's up?" Can you put them, put them on hold for a second. Um, what did you just? You know, we have this, this, or this to do on that day. I'm like, "Oh snap, I forgot." Or, mm. I I know we do. But, but I'm thinking but I could. I'm do, thinking I could do this, this, that, and the other. And, and she's like, that, "I don't know if that's going to work, babe." I don't think that's going to work because we need to be over there like two hours early. Right. And then now, you know, we. You know. This is the part where the ego gets checked. Mm -hmm. This is the part where the rubber meets the road. Right. <laughs> this is the part where me now feeling some type of way because first of all, why are you listening to my conversation? <laughs> Second of all, I'm a grown apple man. I get to make my own decisions. Third of all, I didn't ask you for your opinion, but you know what trumps all of that is because I signed up.
to be held accountable in this area because I opened my mouth at one point and said, said to her, hey, I want to get better in this area. I'm not doing well. And I've given her permission and said that with my words. When you hear me veering off course, let it be known that you have permission to right. course correct me right. or to step in and say something. So now I've given her permission to check me. Now I don't get to uh, rail against that. Now I can feel some type of way because I'm human mm -hmm. and I'm working on it. But the truth of the matter is, is that I open myself up to be checked because I want to be checked. Right, right. And, and that's the big difference, guys, with accountability. So even, you know, in our MAPS community... Um, where we are, you know, we've structured an entire environment for people to be able to come into group coaching environments where they can be held accountable right. for what it is that they say right. they want to do. But here's what doesn't happen in that group. We're not a mafia. This is not a control <laughs> environment. This is not you a think going? dictatorship. Hey, you said you wasn't going out no more. Where you at? I texted you all night long. No, 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 no. Ain't nobody running you down like that. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, here's what I promise you. I learned this years ago. That a man convinced against his will it's is of the same opinion it's still. It's mm -hmm. And the, what that simply means is, is that I can't make anybody do anything. And so whenever you are finding yourself wanting it more than someone else wants it, mm -hmm. uh, working more than someone else is willing to work, uh, the truth of the matter is, is that they're never going to change mm -hmm. because they're not doing the work. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you guys that if you want to reclaim your time, that looks like something. Today, we've been dealing with the way to prioritize that. I really want to encourage you that if you haven't seen the other episodes, this is actually part four. Uh, we dealt with that. So we talked about time blocking. We talked about what that looks like with your children. We talked about what that looks like with your spouse today. Uh, is the last uh, session uh, we're going to talk about, but it's three ways to prioritize. Number one, we said you have to identify what's most important. That is your why. Number right. two is what? The setting boundaries, learning how to say no. No. Saying no to the things that are not as in, that are not most important so that you can say yes to the things that are most important. And the last thing that we want to encourage you is that you're going to have to get a system of accountability. accountability. You should choose that. For those of you guys who want to come grow with us, we certainly want to encourage you to go to the link above, uh, thecrcoach.com, www.thecrcoach.com, and join our MAPS Relationship Academy because that's where we have a group for couples. Uh, whether they're dating or they're engaged or they're married. We have a group for parents, mm -hmm. whether they're co-parents, biological parent. parents, single parents, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We have a room for singles who want to get married. Mm -hmm. The goal is what does it look like to be in an accountability structure and a support structure that helps you fix your picker. Right, right. Helps you to pick right because mm -hmm. we've picked wrong in the past, right? Right. right. And then we have a, men, uh, uh, a men's group and also a separate women's group. So the goal is is that we provide this guy so that people can grow. I know that's the secret sauce to how we've been able to grow so quickly and to maintain that growth over the years. But guys, this stuff works. Um, if you're working, it's been an honor to, to just ride with you, babe, on this series because I'm saying. This is what you do day in and day out. You do it without thinking. Uh, I am a much uh, more structured person than I've ever been in my entire life. Over the my family, when they come to my house, they're looking like this dude is, like this is not the guy we knew <laughs> when we was growing up. When my sister comes through, or what you know, and, and people they say, but this is really my life now because I've been mm -hmm. doing it for tw almost twenty years now. Well, over twenty over years, 20 years mm -hmm. now, really. Uh, but 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 it, it can be it can be something that's that's true for you. Um, that's all we got for today, babe. Yep. We're gonna get up out of here, guys. Do me a favor, continue uh, the conversation in the chat again. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please, do that. Yes, please subscribe and be sure to ring the bell. And also for you guys, please make sure once you sub subscribe, check out our videos. I'm gonna be posting videos over the next couple of weeks of some different tips and strategies on other ways to be able to reclaim your time, such as me meal prepping, um, some home organization tips, just some different things I'm gonna be doing over the next couple of weeks, just to add some more value to you guys as you yep. try to reclaim your time. Reclaiming my time. <laughs> guys, listen, love you all, appreciate you all. Always remember that regardless, regardless of the task, if it's meaningful, if you're trying to get to a place of significance, you cannot do that by, the, by yourself. 
the end of the day, ladies and gents, we all need, need some, some help. help. Y'all be good. We'll talk soon.